Okay, g'day all. Uh, welcome to another bit of C++. Uh, so today I'm going to start talking about Define. Uh, this is a really cool little um, macro tool for C++. And it's often not really given the attention that I think it deserves. Uh, it's really, really interesting and hopefully we can go through some of the really cool things that you can do. Uh, including at the end of this little discussion, not today, but maybe a couple of shoots time. Uh, I want to talk about X macros, which are just just bizarre. <laughs> you know, it takes half an hour just to explain why you'd want an X macro, but uh, hopefully we can get to that eventually. So that's an interesting topic as well. But the core of of these of these little toots is going to be the define uh, preprocessor directive. So that's what we're looking at today. We'll just be going through some simple things. We'll have a bit of coding at the end, and uh, hopefully it's going to be good. Uh, okay, so define lets us specify a preprocessor macro, and it allows for simple symbol swapping, but also relatively complex function-like macros, uh, which we'll see in just a moment. And something to be aware of is just the fact that some programmers don't like define at all. <laughs> um, sometimes define's not the best option because it's not object-oriented, and a lot of C++ uh, programmers feel that you should only do object-oriented things. Uh, or mostly object oriented. I don't know why, but that's you know that's just what they feel. Um, but the other thing, the other problem with define um, is 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 probably a bit more dangerous, and that's the fact that it's not actually type safe. Uh, that's also a benefit in a way. Um, yeah, define is not type safe, um, which means that it doesn't care if you pass integers, floats, strings, or or you know your own class objects or whatever. Um, yeah, define couldn't care less, or the preprocessor couldn't care less, I should say. Okay, but define is really good because its macros are always in line, so they're often faster than calling a function, and defined constants uh, don't take up any RAM, or I should say they're part of the code uh, more so than part of your data segment. So a defined constant is not a variable. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> okay, so the preprocessor. Uh, what in the world is the preprocessor? Before your C++ project is compiled, before your code is handed to the compiler, uh, there's actually another thing that comes along called the preprocessor, uh, which has got its own little language. Uh, most of its language starts with these pound symbols here, and it's the preprocessor's job to prepare the source code for the compiler. And a small subset of C++ is meant for this preprocessor, not the C++ compiler. And we've seen a few of these things before. So include, for example, um, yeah, we've used that a fair bit. The pound include um, is an indication to the preprocessor to grab a bunch of source code from a header and dump it into the current C++ file. Um, yeah, and the other one is define. We've actually seen define in the past as guards, uh, but it does get a lot more interesting. All right, so it's as simple as that, really, though. The, the preprocessor is just going to come along and shuffle around the code, do a bunch of little things before the compiler gets hold of the code. That's the idea. Okay, so be that as it may, how does define work? Um, define is a preprocessor directive, just like include and pragma. And what it is, is it's an instruction to the preprocessor that we want the preprocessor to swap some symbol for some other string in the code. Um, so we give it a symbol, say my symbol or something like that, and then we give it some other string that we want it to swap. Um, yeah, every time it finds my symbol, we want it to swap it for some other string. And that's just about as complicated as it gets. Uh, so it's interesting, it's interesting, but the, the compiler is completely unaware of this swapping. Like the compiler actually doesn't know about include either. Uh, by the time the compiler gets your source code, all of the headers have already been swapped into the source code by this uh, preprocessor, and the compiler knows nothing about it. Uh, it probably wouldn't, <laughs> it probably wouldn't care even if you told it. Uh, but the preprocessor does all of this replacing before the compiler sees the code. Okay, so one of the simplest uses of define, and this is not frowned on by any programmers. Um, I think basically everyone thinks, you know, everybody that programs C++ thinks this is fine. I don't, <laughs> I don't think anybody would complain about headers, oh, sorry, guards. Uh, but we've seen this in the past. So you can define symbols and use them as uh, guards to prevent your code from being included in more than one um, file. Yeah, when you've got multiple files including a header. 
Uh, this is possibly the most common use of define. So, yeah, we've been through that already. Guards. Uh, it's interesting to note also that your symbol just here, so define and then symbol name is some header. Uh, it doesn't actually have a replacement string. Yeah, so we'll see in just a moment that there's meant to be a replacement string there to the right of that symbol name. Uh, but for guards, you don't actually supply that replacement string. Okay, so moving on to the basic syntax of define, it goes a bit like this. We've got pound define, and then we supply some symbol name, and then some replacement string. So the symbol name is often capital letters. You don't have to do capital letters, but it's often a capital letter. And it's what the preprocessor has to look for. And the replacement string is what you want the preprocessor to replace that symbol name with. Um, so it's just going to play a bit of Where's Wally, and every time it finds Wally, it's going to replace it with your replacement string. Uh, simple as that, really, or Where's Waldo? <laughs> uh, if your replacement string is longer than one line, so yeah, if you can't comfortably fit it on one line, uh, you can split it into separate lines by ending each of your lines with the slash symbol. I can't remember if that's uh, the backslash or the forward slash. It's just, you know, it's just a slash. It's, it's that one, whichever one that is. <laughs> Whichever one that is. Um, okay, so the other thing that you might want to do is undefine a symbol once you've defined it. Uh, if you want to undefine a symbol, you just go pound, undef, and then whatever your symbol name is. Um, so just here I've defined a little macro. Don't worry about that. We'll look at that in a second, uh, defining macros. Uh, but mull just here is a macro symbol. So undef mull is going to yeah, remove from the preprocessor's you know, swapping uh, tree or whatever it is. Uh, it's going to remove mole from that so that the preprocessor from then on um, stops swapping moles for whatever the uh, replacement string was. Okay, so before we get on to that uh, macros, we should have a look at about the simplest use of define other than, of course, the uh, guards that we spoke about before. The simplest use of define would be to define a constant. Uh, you can do it something like this. Define or pound define uh, my symbol. That's the symbol name just there. And then whatever constant you want, so 10. And uh, then later on, we could say something like int j equals my symbol times 2. And by the time the C++ compiler gets this line of code, the preprocessor will already have swapped my symbol for 10. So all the compiler will see is int j equals 10 times my symbol. No, <laughs> j equals 10 times 2, it'll see. Um, yeah, and it's just about as complicated as that. So, yeah, good. Oh yeah, um, you should be aware also that you don't put a semicolon at the end of um, yeah your replacement string. So I've got define my symbol 10, and that line doesn't end with a semicolon like normal C++ code. And the reason for that is that the, the preprocessor is pretty blind about the way that it replaces things. And what it would do if we had a semicolon there is a pretty cool, <laughs> pretty cool line of code. It would go int j equals 10 semicolon times 2 semicolon. <laughs> And the compiler would say, what? What are you talking about? Um, yeah, so you don't put a semicolon there because the um, preprocessor will actually swap that in as well. Uh, sometimes you might want to put a semicolon there. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you can put one there if that happens to be what you want to swap. Anyway, something to be aware of is that symbols aren't replaced in strings. Um, yeah, so if you've got a double quote like this, the name is, and then you try and put your uh, define symbol in there, the preprocessor is not going to touch that. Yeah, it's not going to swap that occurrence of the symbol for Garfunkel, even though I've defined it, because that is in the middle of a string. Um, okay, so moving along, defining an expression. This is just before we get to macros. What you might want to do is define an expression. This is, <laughs> this is a hopeless example. Uh, this would be a very weird thing to do, but you could if you want. You could say pound define 10 as 3 plus 7. <laughs> I mean, if you want to waste everybody's time, you could do that. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Uh, then what would happen is by the time that the compiler gets this line in j equals 5 times 10, um, that 10 symbol just there, T-E-N, would be swapped for 3 plus 7 in brackets. Um, okay, so that would be a bit of a waste of time, but you can do that if you want. Uh, what I want to say, and we'll go on to this more in the future, probably next toot and the toot after, but you've got to be very careful about brackets. So if we didn't put the brackets here around the 3 plus 7, um, the expression j equals 5 times and then this ten just here would actually be replaced by the preprocessor as 3 plus 7. 
And what the compiler would do then, because it knows that that bod mass, you know, order of operations thing, uh, the compiler would say, okay, so j equals five times three, uh, which will give you what fifteen. Then it'll add seven to that, um, which is obviously not the answer that we're looking for. Yeah, it's twenty-two, not the fifty we expect. So do be careful. But we'll have a look at more of that in the future. Um, we can also specify macros. Here we go. So this is where things start to get a bit interesting. Um, if you put a bracket straight after your symbol name and then you have a, a comma separated list of what would you call them parameters uh, you got yourself a macro which is interesting it's just like a little function um, note that in a macro for define um, you don't actually put the data types so you just say multiply x y means x times y uh, that should have had a bunch of brackets around it too but yeah, I've been a bit evil um, but it doesn't matter if the uh, preprocessor is swapping you know, doubles or floats or ints or, or anything at all there. It, the preprocessor doesn't care what X and Y are. It doesn't care what data type they are. Um, yeah, so there's no data type supplied, which is why we say that define is not, not type safe. Um, anyway, if we've got something then like um, int Q equals multiply 5,3, um, the preprocessor is going to swap that multiply three, or sorry, five comma three. It's going to swap that for five times three because that's the replacement string just up there, x times y. You see how it works? Yeah. So the uh, five would become x there, the three would become y there, and the preprocessor is going to swap x and y around for the um, yeah replacement string. All good, but like I said, you do have to be careful of brackets. But here we go. We got a few little examples. Um, okay, let me just see if I can make this a bit more to my liking. Okay, so the first example, I'm going to do these as we go, but have a go yourself if you like. Uh, the first example, I want you to um, code this um, or define this fraction here uh, as a double to be pi. Yeah, so that's not actually pi, you know, pi is irrational, but that's pretty close. Uh, the next one, I want you to define a macro to return the square of a number. Yeah, so the uh, symbol name there will be square. It's going to take one parameter. And I want it to return x squared, or x times x. Uh, and the last one that I want you to do, if you, if you, if you can be bothered, uh, give it a go, give it a go. Uh, define a macro that returns true if uh, x is less than y. Otherwise, it returns false. Um, you should be aware for that one that the... Comparison operators, you're greater than and less than, and your double equals and your not equals, all of those things return true or false. Yeah, so that's kind of what I intended for you to use there, but I don't know. Do it whichever way you'd like. Uh, but this is how I would do it. So for define pi, I think I would say something like pound define and pi, and then I would just copy and paste this because I can. And you guys are probably watching a video, so you can't copy and paste it. <laughs> I don't know, I shouldn't laugh, I shouldn't scoff. Uh, but I'd do something like that. So at the moment, those two are integers. So pi at the moment would also be an integer. So what we want to do is um, make sure that they're doubles. I can do that just by putting point zero in there. Uh, you could, if you want, also do the old um, ye old casty. Yeah, that would work as well, but I don't know, we'll just do it like this. Um, note that I've got brackets around it. Yeah, you've got to be really careful with brackets. Put brackets around every expression in a define and around the whole uh, expression itself. Um, yeah, we'll see how that works in just a second. Uh, all right, moving on to number two. Actually, I might print that out. We'll just better make sure that it's right. So C out um, pi is about, settle down, um, pi is about pi. And pi is about pi. <laughs> Sounds like a good program. Uh, there you go. Pi is about 3.14159. So it is. Good stuff. Okay, so my pi is working fine. My pi is operating. Uh, define a macro to return the square of a number. Okay, I hope you had a go at this. This is how I'd do it. Define, well, I wouldn't type include. And I'd put a pound in front of it. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Square. Square. Uh, a lot of people like to use capital letters. Did I mention that? Yeah, capital letters for constants and, and uh, macros and things. So you can use a capital letter there if you want, or you can you know, use whatever casing you like. I might actually... Oh, 
I might actually put an A in there. Uh, just for good measure. Okay, so what does this got to do? Um, okay, so this is a macro. It's got to have a parameter list straight after the symbol name. So the parameter list is just one parameter. It's x. And what it's going to return is x times x. Oops. Uh, something like that is how I would do this to find square. Now, I don't know. You might not have gotten the brackets right, but what I've done here is pretty much what you want to do all the time with these macros. Um, you want to surround each occurrence of the parameters. That's the x here. Surround that with brackets. And you want to surround the entire expression with brackets. Yeah, we'll go over why in the future. But let's have a look if this works. This is going to be cool. So C out. Uh, what number are we going to square? Um, I think we should square 7. I reckon we should square 7. Um, square. Okay, let's give that a run. So that should come up with 49, unless my teachers lied to me. <laughs> no, they didn't. 49. 7 squared is 49. Um, so the other really cool thing about define is that this could be, you know, a, a double. It's not going to make any more code or, or anything. Define is just as happy to use a double or an integer or a float or a string or an object. It, define doesn't care. Um, what we put in the brackets here for x. It's just going to swap it for this replacement string. Um, so we could just as easily use a double. There you go. It's obviously not 7 squared anymore, but yeah, I hope you get the point. Um, okay, so moving along. So the last one, define a macro that returns true if x is less than y. Um, okay, so I didn't actually specify here, but I meant for you to put x and y as parameters. Um, smaller. It's got two parameters, x comma y. So your parameter list is just a comma separated list. And it's going to return x is less than y. So that's going to give us either true or false. But as always with define, you want to put brackets around each occurrence of your parameters and brackets around the whole expression. Okay, let's have a look. So what what, what would we want to know? Uh, I want to know if 128 I don't know, 1,289 is less than 78. That is what I want to know. Let's have a look. According to smaller, I'm just going to top those in last. Uh, handle. Oops. Um, okay, so 1,289 is obviously not smaller than uh, 78, so we should get zero here for false. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, there you go. 1289 is less than 78. Zero. To mean no. Yeah, zero means false, and anything else means true. So, if we try just one more, um, let's go 90 is less than that number. Um, smaller, we'll 90, and I think I better just copy this one. Okay, now 90 is smaller than whatever that is, 178,000. So this should give us a 1 for true. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Gives us a 1. Good stuff. Okay, so that's about all that I wanted to say. This is just um, the initial kind of investigation into Define, and there's a lot more to this mechanism than meets the eye. Uh, hopefully we can move on and have a look at some really cool tricks. Anyway, thanks for watching all. See you later.